gathered to celebrate the start of their season. Today, two programs with great tradition, but both in the transition stage, meet for the first time since 1982. Nebraska's coming off their most disappointing season in three decades. But second-year head coach Frank Solich hopes the return of the injured D'Angelo Evans and Bobby Newcomb can lead them back to the top. The Iowa Hawkeyes are a young and inexperienced team, but on this day, the 25th head coach in Iowa football history, Kirk Ferentz, will make his debut. This is the 40th meeting between these schools from neighboring states, Iowa and Nebraska, coming up from Iowa City. But now, let's go to our New York studio. Iowa City as the Hawkeyes take the field. And hi, everybody. I'm Roger Twibel. Both of these teams coming off disappointing 1998 seasons. For Iowa in the final year under Hayden Fry, they lose eight games, the most during his 20-year tenure here. But maybe even more disappointing, the Nebraska season. Under first-year head coach Frank Solich, they lost four games. As I introduce my partner, Bob Greasy. Bob, that the most losses for Nebraska since way back in 1968. Yeah, and that's 30 years. And not only did they lose nine ball games, but they lost three of the last five. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is they've won three of the last five national championships. They think they can play that well again. And two of the reasons are the injuries that sideline quarterback Bobby Newcomb and uh, D'Angelo Evans, the eye back. They are healthy. They are back ready to play. Kirk Ferentz makes his debut as head coach. And when he got this job, he jokingly said, I thought we opened with Nebraska Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was not he did not inherit a very good ball club. Uh, offensively and defensively last year they were last in the Big Ten and he had to suspend his best player Khalil Hill before the season. I like everything I see about uh, Kirk. Bob we'll look forward to your comments today. We've got Iowa and Nebraska coming up from Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. Okay. All right. Kinnick Stadium. Todd Harris is working with us down on the sidelines and just a moment ago he caught up with the new Iowa head coach. In December, yeah. This, this is going to be a great challenge for our team. What did you tell the kids prior to coming out today? Yeah, we're just going to go out and play our best. That's been our team all the way from the start, and uh, we just want to fight and play hard. That's luck to you. Thank you very much. Well, Iowa won the toss. They've deferred. Nebraska will receive Jason Baker, number seven, to kick it to Carell Buckhalter, and Randy Stella, number 34. Stella's a linebacker on the Nebraska roster who will return kickoffs. As we're underway from Iowa City. And Stella will take it up the middle. Stella across the 30 to the 32 yard line. Where Jason Baker the kicker one of the players over there on the tackle. The Chili starting lineup for Nebraska. Bolt gets the start in place of the injured Schwab at right tackle. In the backfield and wide receivers Davison Applegate. And debates one of the captains, Bobby Newcomb, the starter quarterback, Miller, and D'Angelo Evans. Six starters returning on offense for the Huskers as they've got it first and 10, 32 yard line. And D'Angelo Evans right up the middle to the 40. A nice pickup of eight. As we check out the Hawkeyes defensively for you. Heron, Montgomery, Brown, and Sadon up front for Iowa. Watch Campman, 54, a sophomore. He played as a true freshman. The secondary, Matt Bowen, number nine, led the team in tackles with 92 a year ago. On second down and two. Just shy of the 40-yard line, Evans again. D'Angelo Evans with the first down to the 49-yard line where Matt Bowen has to make the tackle. Evans has missed a lot of games in the last couple of years. He did very well a few years ago as a true freshman, but the injuries the last couple of years have really uh, disappointed him, and he has recommitted himself to having a big season and staying healthy. Three wide receivers for Nebraska on first and 10 at their 48-yard line. On the option, Newcomb number 12 will turn it up, and Bobby Newcomb down to the 41-yard line. Another good pickup 
as LeVar Woods, 97, makes the stop for Iowa. Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator for the Hawkeyes, refers to the quarterbacks, Bobby Newcomb and Eric Crouch, as excellent runners. He said they could be running backs. They are running backs in this offense. That's another. Yeah, they're going to measure it right now. It was listed as a first down, but they're going to bring the sticks out. So just underway on a very hot day here in Iowa City. And that'll be enough for yet another first down. And Bob, what about the uh, Dell game solutions? For Nebraska offensively, just crank up that machine that's been a little bit idle last year. Uh, and Nebraska defensively, they need to dominate the line of scrimmage. And they, that's bottom line, win the line of scrimmage. Wilson Thomas, number nine, is split to the near side. Frankie London, number one to the top of your screen. Evans alone set back. He gets to Jerry D'Angelo Evans inside the 35, down to the 34-yard line, where Tariq Holman comes up to make the tackle. The offensive linemen for Nebraska have always been able to move Hochstein and Volk from the from our left side, pull around to our right side, get up into the hole. But that is one thing about Nebraska offensive linemen. They're big, they're 300 pounders, but they have good feet and they can get around the corner. Bob, you think they'll throw a pass on this drive? Set up for it anytime. They've got the running game. They've going. got the running game working. Second down and three from 34. And here comes Evans. He leans forward, maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, where Holman and Anthony Heron, number 99, were both there. Holman, a senior from Randolph, New Jersey, with five career interceptions. But you know that secondary today, Bob, is going to be getting their share of tackles. Well, they are. They, uh, and they're a good secondary. In fact, if there's a strength, it's the defensive line and the line and, and, and the defensive backs. Only four starters returned from last year on this Hawkeye defense. It's a third down situation now. Third down and three. And Newcomb wants a timeout. Well, the crowd really got into it, making a lot of noise. And Bobby Newcomb, the junior from Albuquerque, calls a timeout. He'll talk it over with Frank Solich. and three sixth play of this drive which started at the 33 yard line Newcomb isn't going to get it good job right there by that Iowa Hawkeye defense as they read the option perfectly 54 Aaron Campman the sophomore big play for the Iowa defense confidence builder big time Campman 54 Davison 37 they're stringing it out 97 they're all getting out there. The option you have to be able to play defense from one sideline to the other, and that was an excellent way. Well, a little confusion there with Nebraska sent out their field goal unit, then now the punter, Haydenfeld, who's a senior from Des Moines, one of two Iowa players on that Nebraska roster, Chris Oliver, back deep, and the ball will be down inside the five. Good job by Nebraska. Randy Stella was the man down to get him. Stella's Randy all Stella, over the place. Yeah, down to <laughs> get that football he inside the five. He hasn't even played defense no, yet. <laughs> he hasn't. The Chili's uh, offensive lineup. As you take a look at Alonzo Cunningham, the only player on that offensive line who started a major college game, very inexperienced. Pretty good wide receivers. Flemister should see a lot of action from that tight end spot today. They'll look to him. And then McCann's the starter at quarterback. And Liddell Betts, who had an outstanding freshman year, the running back, five starters back for Iowa as they take it first and ten, the ball at their own three-yard line. Time, the fullback, nothing. As we'll check that Nebraska defense, and they are going to be a good one before the year's over. Watch for Vandenbosch. He's the other youngster from Iowa, and he's going to be a terrific football player, number 83. Linebackers, speed, solid, Shaw, Polk, and Johnson. 
and the secondary may be as good as they come. And look out for the Browns. Ralph 22 and Mike 21. Eight starters back Bob on that Nebraska defense. Ralph Brown has started every game he has been at Nebraska. That's 39 games since his freshman year. On second and nine. Play action by McCann. He's got a man downfield. Incomplete. Pass intended for number 87, Kevin Casper down there. And Keo Craver on the coverage. But McCann showed you a big time arm right there. Good call, good throw, good coverage. All right here, I like the call coming out of your own end zone. It's a tough call, tough throw for your first throw of the season, but this ball is right on the money. Defensive back may have hit him a little bit early. Maybe just a bit. Maybe a tad early. Now third down and nine. Balls at the four-yard line. Betts trying to get outside, and he is brought down. At the three, Carlos Polk, one of those speedy linebackers, got out there to drop it. So Iowa's going to have to punt from deep in their own end zone. You've got your tailback carrying the ball, trying to get around the corner, and the middle linebacker, Carlos Polk, catches him, chases him down. Tells you about the speed of the linebackers as you oh, talk fast. Jason Baker standing at the back of his end zone to punt it. Junior from Fort Wayne, a career average of just over 40. And Dewan Gross at the 48-yard line. Good snap, end over end punt. Gross right at midfield. Make that crazy. A timeout on the field. 9.45 to go in the first here in Iowa City between Nebraska and Iowa. Todd Harris back with you. Only the third time in the last 20 years Nebraska's opened on the road. They like to have them come up to Lincoln and see them, Bob. Well, they, and they've done pretty well in their first yeah. game. Now, Roger, this is just a continuation of their first offensive series. When they punted, they were right about here. Now you just continue. The defense did a nice job stopping uh, Iowa. First and 10, 31 yard line, D'Angelo Evans. A little stutter stop. Inside the 30 to about the 28, where Joe Slattery, the senior from Pocahontas, Iowa, comes up to make the tackle. There's Slattery, number 11. Where'd you, where'd you say he was from? Pocahontas, Iowa. <laughs> they got some great names yes, in the towns they, in the state, don't they? Yes, they do. Sioux yeah. City. Slattery and Bowen, a couple of seniors, along with Holman in that secondary. So three seniors in the sophomore Stockdale in the secondary for Iowa. You got single coverage on the outside if you want to throw the football. On second and eight from the 29. Look at Nuka. Makes something out of nothing. Yep. Stretches down to about the 23 yard line where Stockdale will make the stop. And uh, coming up next here on ABC Sports, the second part of our doubleheader. You won't want to miss it as Notre Dame pays a visit to Ann Arbor. It's the season opener for Michigan. The Fighting Irish have got one under their belt as they took care of Kansas last week in South Bend. Yeah, Lloyd, the uh, car wasn't too happy well, he about that one. Now another third down for Nebraska. Third and two as Evans will get it. And Evans is stood up by 54 Aaron Campman. It'll be close to the first down, but I don't believe he got it. Well, Bob, I asked you if Nebraska was going to throw a pass here. Or are they just going to try to do this all on the ground? Hey, they'll get around to it. Just, <laughs> just let us run our offense a little bit. Catman, 54 in the middle of your screen, does a nice job, does what a middle linebacker should do, and that is just fill the open gaps, plug the holes, and stop the runner short. If you have an offensive machine, as good as offense as the uh, Nebraska has had over the years in running the football, you should be able to pick up fourth and one here. It's fourth and let's call it a long one. On the option is Newcomb rolls ahead. He'll be close. Depends on the mark, and I think they're going to mark him short. It was Campman again along with Jerry Montgomery, number 91. The sophomore from Mesquite, Nevada. 
And the Iowa players are yeah. saying no. They can look over there. They can see the marker on the sideline and where the ball is placed. This would be huge confidence builder for the uh, Hawkeyes. Kirk Ferentz, who was a assistant head coach, offensive line coach with the Baltimore Ravens, former head coach at Maine. And they did indeed stop Nebraska on fourth down. Great job by that Iowa defense. Norm Parker told us yesterday that his, his defensive line had to step up big. And so far in the first two series, they have. It's going to be an option play. Take the fullback. Bobby Newcomb put it in the hands of your best player. Iowa doing a nice job. Now Iowa first and 10 from the 21 without a huddle. Three wide receivers as they come in from the sideline and just go right to the formation. McCann on the rollout is nailed. At the 16 yard line, it was Lauren Kaiser, the junior from Farwell, Nebraska, who got to him. Kaiser had five sacks a year ago. And this was a problem, Bob, for Iowa last season because they allowed 52 sacks on the year, 19 in the last two games alone, and McCann was on the end of a lot of those. But Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska, was telling us he really didn't know what to expect from this offense. You got the assistant coaches, coordinators coming in from everywhere, and a head coach coming in. So what you're seeing is what we see a lot of quick passing. Second down, 14 from the 17-yard line, and Betts will get it, and Betts will go nowhere. Well, I'll tell you, Brian Shaw, number 46, the senior from DeWeese, Nebraska, was right there on him. Shaw, not only a good football player, but in the classroom, a 4.0 GPA. You like those good football players that are also good in the classroom, don't you? Smart, <laughs> run. He shared time the last a couple of years with Tony Ortiz. A lot of depth at linebacker. Third down, 13. 618 left to go first quarter. McCann eludes trouble. Got a receiver. Chris Oliver short of the first down at the 29 yard line. Steve Warren, 96 for Nebraska, was applying the pressure, but McCann a good job to break loose. First, I thought it was a screen how fast the defensive line got in there, but the offensive line for the Hawkeyes are having a little problem up front early in the ball game. And that'll bring Jason Baker on. He'll be back at the 15. And Craver five and Gross, Gross five and Craver three are sort of alternating back there. Well, they've never, neither one of them has ever returned a punt before this year. Now Gross moves up and Craver will stay back and we get a whistle down on the field. Please reset the 25 second clock. Baker's first punt was 45 yards. And this is uh, going to be a key today, the kicking game for Iowa. Can Baker pin Nebraska down at the other end? Bad Sheldon will snap it. Kick there. Craver takes it at the 20 to spin. Craver then hit. Still gets away. Up to the 30. Showed you some good moves right there. Keo Craver. And 5-14 to go first quarter after the 51-yard punt by Jason Baker. Crouches into the game, Bob, but so is Newcomb. Yeah, they're both in there. Crouch is lining up as a flanker on the left side. They battled for the quarterback job, Crouch and Newcomb, and Newcomb was named starter just about a week ago. First and 10 from the 30. All 10 Nebraska offensive plays have been running plays, and this one will be a run, too, as Evans tries to swing outside with Crouch blocking and a gain of about three. Right now, let's go to our New York studios and John Saunders. John? Roger, Burger King, win your way up. Thanks, John. Second down and seven now. At the 33 yard line, Crouch is out. One quarterback in. Handoff right up the middle. That was 15. Willie Miller, the junior from Omaha, the much injured Willie Miller. Pospisil, number 50, 
the senior from Mount Vernon, Iowa, was in there on the tackle. Two quarterbacks in the game early, uh, Frank Solich. I like that. Uh, there's been so much uh, said about the uh, two quarterbacks and who's going to play for Nebraska. Will it be Nuke or will it be Crouch? So he gives him something else to think about. Well, we got this guy lined up as a flanker. Watch out for a pass, a reverse pass. Just give him something else to think about. And he said Crouch would play quarterback today. Yeah. Third down and six. This has been a surprising Iowa defense so far as Newcomb throws it for the first time. He's got Davison. Matt Davison makes the reception. And that'll be a first down for Nebraska. Joe Slattery over there on the coverage. You see the numbers from a year ago and those 32 receptions for Davison, the most since Irving Friars, 40, back in 1983. What does that tell you? <laughs> this kid's pretty good, it and is. Nebraska doesn't throw a lot of passes. 82, Applegate, the wing back in motion on first and 10 from the 43. Newcomb to throw again. He's got a man wide open. He's got his tight end. That's Wistrom. Wistrom down to the 27 yard line before Holman, number two, can take him out. Tarig Holman finally brought down Tracy Wistrom, 30 yards on the pickup. Well, it's a rollout. The receiver's going to come down and clear out, but right here, the tight end's going to come down and break to the outside. It's a nice play. Rolling out to the left, left side. He's going to get a nice throw. Nice stretch wide open. Good design. First and 10 from the 27-yard line. Newcomb, penalty marker goes down. And Newcomb maybe gets two. If that name Wistrom sounds familiar, it should. we got a lot of brothers that play here at Nebraska. Yeah, and some good ones, but they play defense. Now the holding call against Nebraska. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Chevy Silverado. It's not just any truck, it's the truck. Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. Bud Light with a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. And National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. So the holding penalty. 10 yards. Yeah, holding is a little bit different this year, Roger, and we're going to talk about that at halftime. Terry Bowden's going to do a little piece on it, but uh, holding basically, it's from the, from the original line of scrimmage now and not from the uh, area in the backfield. Ball spotted back at the 39, first down and 21. Newcomb looking downfield and just overthrown the intended receiver Frankie London. The senior from Lake Charles, Louisiana is Matt Stockdale was back there on the coverage. Yeah. Stockdale's a burner. Yeah, had a high school 100 meter champ here in Iowa. Yeah, well, you're talking about all those fast guys back there. This is a pass that should have been completed. It was wide open and uh, just got outside. No pressure. Pulls up, just overthrows it a little bit. Second down at 21. Evans is the lone setback. Some movement over on the left side. You saw 98 Sadat come across for Iowa and make a little touch on Adam Jolch. Dead ball. All start on the offense. Five yards. We pick it up. Well, most of you next Saturday will see Notre Dame against Bob Greasy's alma mater, those powerhouse Boilermakers of Purdue and Drew Brees. Heisman Trophy candidate. That'll be a good one. Notre Dame and Purdue. And then regional coverage. You'll be at Nebraska for Cal, Nebraska on second and 26. Newcomb can't get out of trouble as he's brought down at the 49-yard line. 91 Jerry Montgomery and 99 Anthony Heron both there. So this Nebraska offense struggling now. Pass protection jolts on the right side. 
flushes him outside the pocket. Originally a covered sack. You know, we, and early we said the Dell game summaries that uh, Nebraska needed to crank up the offense, get the machine going. Well, it's sputtering right now. They've got third and 30. Newcomb on the straight drop. Going down for a pickoff. Stockdale's got it. Stockdale's got some speed. Look out! Grab from behind at the 45-yard line by Wilson Thomas. Matt Stockdale, the sophomore from Iowa Falls. 31 yards on the return with his first pick. Well, when you get Nebraska out of their comfort zone, it's third and long, and you've got to throw the football, this is not what they do best. The ball is just thrown up for grabs. There was a man running through the area, but it was zone coverage. The Iowa Hawkeyes had much better vision on the ball than did the receiver. First and 10, 44-yard line. We'll see if the Iowa offense can get moving. McCann with some pressure on him. Underthrows his intended receiver, Kevin Casper. Uh, Bob, this is an offense that last year absolutely struggled. Last in the conference in total offense, 109th in the nation. Last in rushing offense, 109th in the nation. And next to last in the Big Ten in scoring offense. And they've got four new starters in their offensive line. Two are redshirt freshmen. And the center is a transfer. And that is the Achilles heel for this offense, is that offensive line going against a very good defensive line. Second down and 10 from the 44. McCann being pressured, put up in the air. The catch is made. The catch was made at the 40-yard line by Casper as McCann, underneath a lot of pressure from Kyle Vandenbosch, was able to get rid of it. One-on-one -on -one at the top of your screen, Casper and Craver. The ball should be thrown now, but he's having problems. Casper does a nice job of coming back away from the defensive man to allow the quarterback to throw the ball late. Casper, a junior from Burr Ridge, Illinois, one of 22 players from the state of Illinois on this Iowa team, as the Hawkeyes have it third down and six from the 40. Oliver was the motion man. McCann with a near side and overthrows his intended receiver, Chris Oliver. <laughs> too much pressure and too tight a coverage equates to equates to Iowa not being able to get anything done offensively. Well, you were talking about that young, inexperienced offensive line. Bruce Nelson, the uh, left tackle, number 72, a converted tight end. He came to Iowa a year ago as a tight end, weighing, what, about 220 pounds? He was a he, tight end, a skinny, uh, skinny kid uh, tight end. He put 45 pounds on, maybe 50 pounds, but I don't think he's carrying that much no. out there today. Baker to punt it back at the 46. Craver back deep. Nice high punt out of carry into the end zone. And with 142 left to go first quarter, no score between I and Nebraska. And who would have figured this, uh, Bob? This has been impressive by the Hawkeyes' defense so far. And, and that's the whole key right there. Uh, and the other, the defense for the Hawkeyes has set up the offense. The offense hasn't been able to do anything. You got you got Nebraska out of their comfort zone, a third possession, forced them to throw the ball on third and long, and that is not what the Cornhuskers do best. There's Crouch on the sideline. As we mentioned, he will see some action. At least that's what Frank Solich told us yesterday. So first and 10 from the 20-yard line for Bobby Newcomb. D'Angelo Evans. Now Evans, 5'9", 215, the junior from Wichita, Kansas, broke all of Barry Sanders' rushing records. Of course, Barry Sanders, an outstanding high school player in Wichita before going to Oklahoma State. And well, the injury situation for D'Angelo Evans, he's been dogged by injuries in his Nebraska career. He's played in just 14 games in three years. He's making just his fifth start today, and they run the gamut head to toe for this young man. Good to see him have a good, healthy year. Second down and seven. The throw to the near side, and the catch is made over there by Matt Davison. So Davison, 
a very sure-handed receiver with good speed. And, you know, it's surprising the good receivers, Bob, that did come to Nebraska, a program that really doesn't throw that much. Well, the, the Iowa coaches were telling us yesterday that uh, these guys can catch. They have a lot of speed, and they can catch the football. They just don't choose to, to go that way. They want to run the football, run the option, and then take their shots downfield when they want to, not when they have to. Third and one at the 29. Miller's the fullback. Evans the eye back. Evans is going to get it. And Evans has got the first down as he pounds it to the 33 yard line. So some tough inside running right there by D'Angelo Evans before he's brought down by Jerry Montgomery, number 91. There have been so many great eye backs through the years with. Nebraska and they've got a fellow by the name of Dan Alexander who weighs 245 pounds who we will see before the day is over and he is something else. And he's a little bit unusual for an eye back. I mean, he's a little bit bigger than most of their eye backs have been through the years. We've completed the first quarter and we have got no score between Nebraska and Iowa from Iowa City. Iowa City, Roger Twibell, Bob Greasy, Todd Harris with you on a, uh, a warm but a very sunny Saturday here as the uh, Hawkeyes open up this 1999 season against Nebraska. And there is a lot of red in the stands here. Just about a four hour drive from Omaha on Interstate 80. A lot of red. A lot of red. <laughs> All over the place. First and 10, 33 yard line. That's Wistrom in motion to the near side. Newcomb. Penalty marker goes down. Bobby Newcomb with some room. Newcomb across the 40 to the 42 yard line. But penalty marker down as both Matt Bowen and Joe Slattery come over to make the tackle. This is a Big 12 crew. Tom Ehlers, the referee. Signal is against Iowa. So the Iowa defense, Bob, got off to a good start in that first quarter. They did. The third down uh, stop right here. Uh, next uh, series, a fourth down stop right here. Nebraska's had the ball three times, and this is the way the third possession ended in an interception. And what has happened here is the confidence of the Iowa team has just went straight up. And you've got to have some questions now offensively for Nebraska on offense. Finotti, Toniyu Finotti from Hawaii, a true freshman, has checked into the game at left guard, six foot four, 330 pounds. As Evans will take it, and Evans is stopped. Could be close to the first down on that second and two after the penalty. As Bowen and Pospisil both were there to make the tackle. All right, Bowen, 92 tackles a year ago. When you look at it from behind the offense. Iowa doing a nice job of just staying on your feet, getting some black shirts out there, and not having any huge gaps. Good job by Bowen, who led this team in tackles last year. 6'3", 196, good speed. That was a first down, so first and 10 as Dan Alexander has checked into the game, number 38 for Nebraska. And the play action as penalty markers go flying. Newcomb finds Wistrom, and Tracy Wistrom. Is run out of bounds over at the 42 yard line. Markers down all over the place. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yards, repeat the down. Well, Nebraska making a lot of little penalties on their offensive line. Good call by Frank Solich. I think that is the thing that he's going to have to do against Norm Parker's defense is throw early on first downs, loosen up. There's no question they're sending eight guys up to stop the run. There's a lot of area downfield to throw the football. I'll make it first down and 15. Just underway, second quarter. Nebraska, the penalties, three for 22 yards. On the option, Newcomb with the pitch. Alexander across midfield. I want to tell you what, folks, this is a bruising running back. Dan Alexander, six foot, 245 pounder from Wentzville, Missouri. He was a heavyweight wrestling champion 
in high school in the state of Missouri. And he is going to be very, very difficult to contend with. Good tandem back there with D'Angelo Evans. Ball at the 48-yard line. Second and three. Miller, the first back through, and he'll get the first down inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. Well, now it's time for the Aflac trivia question. This week's question, what Nebraska fullback holds the single game net rushing record? And we'll be back with the answer to that in just a couple of minutes. But rack your brain on that one. He's in the stadium today. He is. There's the fullback, Willie Miller. First and 10, 45-yard line. Three wide receivers for the Huskers. Lucan, the quick pitch on the option. Alexander's got a blocker in front of him. Dan Alexander just trips up. Alexander was just tripped up at the 20-yard line to Rig Holman. Number two, one of the players back there is Alexander picks up 25 yards. This is what makes Nebraska so tough, and this is a great call. Notice the three wide receivers, one, two, and three, but watch the blocks as the receivers and the fullback are going to get as they come around and run the option to the top side of the screen. They show a pass, uh, pass set on first down, and then they run the option from that. Boy, Holman just got him by the shoe to trip him up and save the TD. First and 10, 21 yard line, London in motion. As the option to the near side, Newcomb the leads one player. He's brought down at the 20 by Matt Bowen. And we'll send it to New York right now at John Saunders. John? Texas and Stanford, and what a day major. All right, John, thank you. Second and nine from the 20. Alexander gets the call up the middle. Alexander down to the 15 yard line where Aaron Campman makes the tackle. This Nebraska team, sixth in the nation in rushing offense last year, over 253 yards, but Bob, their lowest since 1976 when a guy named Ferragamo was playing quarterback and they were throwing it just a little bit more. Yeah, up. what does that tell you? Yeah. You gain that much yardage, but, uh, but you're sixth in the nation. They're used to being number one or number yeah. two in rushing the football. Third down and four. 15-yard line, and Iowa has really been terrific in third-down situations. Nebraska 2 of 5 in third-down situations so far. Fumble by Newcomb. Now this is something that just drives coaches crazy, your offensive coaches, when you drop the ball in a critical situation. the football so another big third down stand for the Hawkeyes Roger. what happens is the center the center starts his block before he completes the snap the center tries to reach whenever you have to reach one way and the quarterback pulls out the other way you don't complete the snap and the ball is on the ground LeVar Woods recovered the fumble that was Rayola the center you see where the uh, defensive lineman right on the center's nose. On first and 10 from the 17, they give it to LaBelle Betts, the sophomore from Blue Springs, Missouri. He was the uh, Kansas City Area High School Player of the Year back in 96. Wills there to make the stop. There's LaBelle Betts. They I was just going to say, Bob, that they said he doesn't have that great breakaway speed, but he can really make you miss. Second and eight. Time 31 is a fullback. And Betts will get it again. And you saw right there, he can make you miss. As Liddell Betts gets to the 24 before Mike Brown, one of the captains for Nebraska, makes a stop. This defensive line of the Cornhuskers is eating up that young offensive line for Iowa. I mean, he was in the backfield, got the ball, and he was dodging, trying to break tackles before he even got back to the line of scrimmage. Well, it's a good thing he can elude tackles, right? Good quality to have in a day like this. A 
Let's see what Iowa can do on third down and two. If Iowa could just make some first downs, and that's what they told us yesterday, we need to make first downs and just keep the ball. That was Betts in motion as McCann with some pressure throws it up in the air and incomplete. Well, McCann got some pressure from Jason Lohr, number 70, the sophomore out of Tulsa. One of the first players there and selective 56 was also around. Well, we talked about the pressure. Take a look. It's Lightfoot number 70. He gets beat right there. 70 is Lohr. It's uh, Ken, right. Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator, said, we need to make some first downs, keep the ball, shorten the game. Baker back at the 10, and both Craver and Gross back for Nebraska. Into the wind, and this is a low line drive kick. That's fielded by Craver. Craver cuts it, spins, turns it up. Craver across midfield to the 47 yard line. So Keo Craver has shown you some nice moves returning punts. We're in the second quarter, 9 29 to go. No score between Iowa and Nebraska. The football, but they haven't put any points on the board. So Newcomb takes a knee on the sideline, and Eric Crouch. The sophomore from Omaha, one of the fastest players on the team, is in at quarterback on first and ten. And Alexander, a huge hole down to the 35, where Bowen and Slattery kind of got in his way. They're just running right at him. Oh. He said the option's not working, running left and right, so we'll run right up the middle at you. The offensive line block doing a great job blocking Sherman and Hawkstein. Look and, at that uh, hole, Rayola. <laughs> Nobody touched him until he got deep into the secondary. He's a big oh, load. Man. Four carries, 53 yards as Alexander will get it again. Shakes off a couple tackles, leans forward, gets down to the 31-yard line. Dan Alexander. Nebraska's had the ball four times. This is their fifth possession. And they've... Uh, Stopped themselves the last two times. They've had two turnovers in four possessions. A lot of yardage, but no points. Last year, Nebraska had nine starters, missed 45 games. They used three different quarterbacks and eye backs. Eleven players missed all or part of spring football. Injuries a huge Here problem last year. As Crouch on the option will put his head down, get inside the 30, down to about the 28 on that second and six were Aaron Campman. One of four true freshmen to play last year for the Hawkeyes in what turned out to be the uh, final campaign for the uh, legendary Hayden Fry. Yep. One of the things I was doing, look at all 11 players with six yards of the line of scrimmage. Nobody's playing deep. What uh, Nebraska has to do when they see that is throw the ball downfield to one of their wide receivers or sneak their tight end straight down the field. Another third down situation for Nebraska. Third down and three at the 28. Crouch fakes a pitch to Alexander. Crouch has got it. Crouch heading for the end zone. Touchdown, Nebraska. Twenty-eight yards on the touchdown run by the sophomore Eric Crouch. on the field before the game talking to Iowa's defensive coordinator Norm Parker and he says this kid is like a running back he runs better than uh, Newcomb and he uh, he scares him when he gets in there this kid this kid could be uh, an eye back Josh Brown the freshman to attempt the point after and he makes it so a freshman snapper in John Garrison the freshman kicker Josh Brown from four Oklahoma and Nebraska Finally on the board, seven to nothing on the touchdown run by Eric Crouch. Greasy Todd Harris back with you here in Iowa City where Nebraska has finally punched one over. Seven to nothing the score as Hayden felt will kick it off. Chris Oliver and Doug Miller back deep. There's a look at Chris Oliver. Aiden Feld will kick it with the wind to his back here. Nice breeze today in Iowa City on this hot day. And uh, that will be to the back of the end zone as they'll bring it out and start it from the 20-yard line. 
go back and take a look. Watch the right guard, number 55. That's Hochstein. He's, he's going to get out in front for this option. Watch 55. He gets good feet. Now he gets a block, stays with his block. Huge hole. Number seven, quarterback, Nebraska, running in for a touchdown. Reminds you of uh, Scott Frost a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. And, and you know, Bob, during the winter, this kid was timed 4-3 in the 40. I mean, he is one of the fastest players on the team. He's a quarterback. You yeah. Know, you know, what do you expect? Well, you know, Good looking, smart. You were about what? Fast. 4-7 maybe? Yeah, for the first 30 yards. <laughs> <laughs> first and 10 for Iowa. They've been three and out on all four possessions so far as Betts takes it and Betts to the 20, right back to the line of scrimmage where he stops. Well, Sunday night, it's the season opener. The Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers on ESPN Sunday Night Football. They're special and have a, a great defense. And uh, Brian's uh, sat and watched last year, and he said he's ready to play, so we'll see. We'll look forward to that on Monday Night Football as McCann is nailed again. The intended receiver, Flemister, the tight end. Chris Kelsey, redshirt freshman out of Auburn, Nebraska, number 57. One of the players that came busting through there. This is a second defensive line for Nebraska. They're going against the regulars, and... Uh, it's going to be a long day for Mr. McCann, and if they don't straighten that stuff out, that's and that's quick passing. Yeah, they haven't made a first down yet. Chris, the younger brother of Chad, who uh, also wore number 57, and was quite a football player for the Cornhuskers. 39 as Oliver goes in motion from the 21-yard line. Seven minutes left to go in the first half, and there's a quick hit. Oliver, the intended receiver, but he was busted on by Ralph Brown, who was all over him. Ralph, the senior from Hacienda Heights, California, one of the team captains, Tony Ortiz, put the pressure on McCann. Now, first of all, is the problem. You got to throw quick. So three steps and throw before the uh, the pressure gets to you, and then the coverage was there because he threw into coverage. And Ralph Brown made a nice play. Keo Craver, who's shown awfully well, returning punts so far today for Nebraska, and Jason Baker. This is his fifth punt of the day. Into the wind, that hangs up. And Nebraska's just going to let it fall. And it'll roll down at about the 34-yard line. Well, ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chrysler. Engineered to be great cars. Innovative computer solutions from the company that pioneered direct around the world. Be direct Dell. Tyco International. Do you know Tyco? And Chili's are proud to have gone inside of Iowa's 35-yard line. Iowa, on the other hand, has yet to make a first down and has punted every time. Eric Crouch remains in at quarterback. First and 10, 34-yard line. Changes signals at the line of scrimmage, and Alexander will get it. Alexander had a little something to his left. Kind of put his head down, didn't see the hole as it opened up. Derek Davison, number 37, was there to make the stop. And... What Nebraska fullback holds a single game net rushing record? Our AFLAC trivia question. Greasy, you got an idea on this? Well, he was in the stadium, but I think he's on the sideline. How about that? Frank Solich versus Air Force back in 1965, 204 yards. As Frank said, that's back when the fullback carried, <laughs> yeah. carried it a little bit more than they do now. That's, they had that full house working back yeah. then. <laughs> yeah. Second and seven from the 37. And once again, the big man, Dan Alexander, as he pulls his way ahead to the 43-yard line. And hey, Bob, when did those black shirts start getting a little hot out there on the field? Oh, today, boy. Huh? I, I was surprised that the Iowa was going to wear their uh, colored shirts instead of the, uh, the white shirts. But talking to Frank yesterday, he's a very bright guy. You know, he's a fullback here, as we said. Things are not working on the, uh, the option going around the end, so he's running his fullback right up the middle. And the quarterback sneaking in there. Crouch gets the touchdown. Adjust to what they see defensively. Third and one. Alexander nailed behind the line of scrimmage and a heck of a hit right there. Well, I'll tell you what, Sadat, one of the players, Jerry Montgomery, Bowen, Matt Bowen was also yeah. in there. Boy, that bunch did a terrific job that time as they come up big on third down once again. Great hit by Bowen, number nine. He's up there. Montgomery and Bowen, good defense right there. 
Montgomery's the youngster from Mesquite, Nevada, who caddied for Hayden Fry at a golf course out there. He said, kid, do you play football? He said, yeah. He goes, let me give you a scholarship. He's 6'3 and 290 pounds, and he was uh, showed up carrying uh, Hayden's golf club. Nebraska to punt it. Hayden fell. With the wind to his back, sends it to Chris Oliver, who takes it inside the five. And not a good decision right there as he is buried at the three yard line. Big group down there, including gross number five. Huskers lead it seven to nothing. Iowa City, Kinnick Stadium, the score seven to nothing. The Nebraska Cornhouse is out in front. Now, if you want to know what it's like to be a young quarterback in the pocket with that Nebraska defense looking down on you, this is what Kyle McCann sees. On first and ten from the four, and he'll hand it to Tyne as fullback. And that's what Tyne sees. A lot of white shirts right there, Gracie. Yeah, that's, uh, first of all, it's not a fun place no. to be a quarterback back inside your own five-yard line. Second, it, it, when you have an inexperienced offensive line, four new starters going against a defense such as Nebraska's, this is not, not a fun place to be. The, the thing that he needs to do is make some first downs. What, however you can do it, short passing, roll outside the pocket, quick traps, whatever. You just need to get some uh, momentum going. Well, they need to make one first down. They haven't had one yet with 4.07 to go. Handoff goes to Liddell Betts, and Betts across the 10 leans forward to about the 12 yard line where Mike Brown, the senior from Scottsdale, Arizona, who made 106 tackles last year. Let's look at the offensive line. A nice job there. The uh, tight end gets in front of him. Offensive line, mostly zone blocking. That means they block an area, not a man, and they just uh, did a nice job on that one. On a third down to two, Iowa wants a timeout with 3.41 left to go on the first half on a, a crucial third down for them, deep in their own end. Timeout situation. Each team has taken one. You know, Bob, as we take a look at this, this Iowa offense, the, the important thing, I guess, is not to make a mistake. Your defense is giving you a little something to work off of. You're only behind seven to nothing. You got 340 left to go. The key is not to try to do something you can't do. Hey, if we would have told Kirk Ferentz uh, yesterday, would you take seven to nothing with uh, three minutes and 40 seconds to go before halftime, he would have taken it in a minute. The offense has not turned it over. Punting is not a bad thing to do. I mean, they'd like to be doing more. They'd like to be making first downs. But the way your defense is playing, don't turn it over and help uh, the offense for Nebraska. So Kirk Ferentz has talked it over with his quarterback and the pressure by that Nebraska defense, Bob. Well, you're going to see it here. There's a pressure out on the on the edge. There's a pressure on the quarterback. And you know, we, we keep track of sacks, but we don't keep track all the time of pressures and how quickly he's got to get rid of it. Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, always doing a great job. Third and two from the 12. McCann throws it underneath, and he's got the first down. They finally have got one with 336 left to go in the first half. Tony Ortiz, the what, senior from New York. And what that tackle. may do, Roger, is keep the ball away from the Nebraska offense the rest of this half. You know, just they don't need to score. They love to score, but but Iowa just needs to keep the momentum, move it down, because this offense cannot keep up with this defense all day. They need to hang around and hang around and then hope Nebraska makes a mistake. So they've already made two mistakes. First and 10, 18 yard line. Betts says just pummeled right there. Aaron Wills and the ball loose on the ground. There was a three or four. Nebraska's Nebraska. got it. Guys, Ortiz. So Tony Ortiz, Aaron Wills, 81, got to the running back bats. Good exchange. Good handoff. Ball comes out. Now the defense, so there's three or four Nebraska guys trying to pick the ball up. No question it's a fumble. It's a good call. The, Iowa doesn't, doesn't even know where the ball is, but three or four Nebraska guys tried to pick it up and run it in. First and goal from the nine-yard line. 
Newcomb back in the game. They'll pitch it out. They turn it over. And Iowa gets it back. Right on top of it was Ed Sadat. 98 comes up with it. So we just talked about making mistakes. And they make two. One for each team. You talk about an offense, and you think throwing the football is a high risk. Running the option, you have a lot of turnover just because of this. The quarterback, do I pitch it? Do I not pitch it? He threw it late. The exchange wasn't good. And Nebraska is, is, is going to have a lot of turnovers if they don't. The timing is not good on their flips. Bob, are you surprised if Newcomb came back in after Crouch had led him to no, score? not at all. Two fumbles and one interception by Newcomb so far today. And Iowa now on first and ten from the 11-yard line. And nothing happening right there with the fullback Rob Tyne, a senior from Iowa City, one of seven players from Iowa City on this uh, Hawkeye football team. Aaron Wills was there to make the tackle. I don't think Frank Solich looks at it that way. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I think the, the, the fumble that happened before this one was more of the center's fault than it was the quarterback's fault. And he knows that. And he's got two quarterbacks who are going to play all year. So he wanted to get the other one in, let Newcomb get some, uh, get some points. Second and 11 from the 10-yard line as McCann will look downfield. And there's the tight end, Flemister. At the 25-yard line, big confidence booster right there for McCann. He faked, stood in the pocket. Hey, hey, look, I got some time here. They're not nobody who's on my back. I can throw this ball. Brown, big, big booster for him. Brown and Ortiz are down there to make the stop. Little play action might help with the protection. Clemister is a good story. First and 10, 25. Boy, some momentum now and some confidence for this Iowa team. <laughs> McCann's talking to the ref yeah. and say, hey, I didn't have the ball and they hit me. <laughs> that was pretty good fake. Real good fake. He's talking to the official. That's um, Tom Ehlers. <laughs> he faked it, and the defensive end didn't know whether he had it or not. He just got... He got hit harder there than he when he ever he had the ball. 143 left to go in the first half, and Nebraska came into this game favored by as many as four touchdowns. This is a huge surprise that this young and inexperienced Iowa team has played so well, particularly their defense today. On second and four, Betts will get it. And Liddell Betts still battling. Betts has got the first down and a penalty marker. As Betts got it to the 39-yard line where Finley and Brown make the tackle. But a flag came in. And the Iowa players clapping their hands. Face mask, personal foul, Nebraska. There it is right there. No question about it. Johnson on the face mask. 15 yards will be added on to the range of the run. First down. I think, I think you have to look to the sideline for the reason Iowa's doing so well. I think Kirk Ferentz has taken this ball club and won them over. He's made some tough decisions. He's uh, some, made some suspensions. He says, I want a few good men. If you don't like it, there's the highway. Get to hit the road. He suspended Khalil Hill, his best player. Uh, they number, like it. First and 10, 45-yard line, and a number of players who started on this team yesterday, or last year, excuse me, hit as the pass rolled down the field, and the attendant receiver, Rashir Yamini, Mike Brown and Keo Craver back on the coverage. you got to love the call. It was a great call right there. Going deep, seeing if they can hit the long one with just over a minute to go, but you're right. Ference had to make some tough decisions. He came into a new program, and... He knew he was going to be inexperienced and thin, but you got to stick by what you believe, and he feels very confident in what he did. And He's building a solid yeah. foundation, good discipline, hard work, and I like that call. You get to the 50-yard line, you haven't been close to midfield, take a shot. Second and 10, 45-yard line of Nebraska. Iowa's got a couple of timeouts remaining. Cance hit as he throws 70. Jason Lohr got to him. Lohr is the backup nose tackle. 6'2", 275 pounder. A lot of these Nebraska defensive players like to shave their heads before the uh, <laughs> season starts. The scary thing is they shave each other's 
heads. They don't go to the barber and do it. We were practice yesterday. I, nobody had any hair. We thought something yeah. was happening with the water out in Nebraska. We ought to. I tell you, I, I wonder how many times McCann has gotten hit today. Well, he's a tall kid, 6'5", maybe weighs 190, might be closer to about 180. Third down and 10, 45 yard line. Nebraska leads it 7 nothing. As McCann will throw it underneath. And, well, the intended receiver was Casper. And there were a bunch of players that kind of in the general area. Kelsey was uh, one of the guys, and it hit Kelsey, it looked like, in the back of the helmet. Well, they had a blitz on, and whenever you see a blitz, sometimes there are blitz adjustments that the receivers have to break their routes off. And that was the case there. The quarterback read it, but the receivers didn't. So Jason Baker will drop back for his sixth punt of the day at the 40-yard line. He'll punt into the wind. 57 seconds remain here in the first half. Braver going to let it bounce. And inside the five. And let's uh, check out what's going to be coming up on the Valvoline 99 halftime report as we go to New York with John Saunders and Terry Bow. Yeah, penalties. Bowden ball. Huh? Well, you know. I mean, now for all those years he was coaching, yeah. he had all those penalties yeah. called. Now he can start talking about That's it, right? right? You know what, though? Sooner or later, he'll be back in coaching. First and ten as they spotted at the seven. Bobby Newcomb back in at quarterback, and they'll hand it right up the middle to Tyrone Euler, number 35, who gets his first carry of the day. And it doesn't appear as though uh, Nebraska wants to take a time out here as the clock continues to run both teams with a couple of timeouts remaining hot and humid Saturday here in Iowa City kind of a hazy day and look at this 201 total yards but only seven points a touchdown run by Eric Crouch now that was probably the, the, the biggest run around the end most of the yardage has been coming up up the middle and the handoff up the middle and that's going to end the first half here from Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa. And even though Iowa trails, they have got to feel absolutely great about the way they play in the first half against the sixth ranked team in the nation. And then the turnovers. Nothing for Iowa. Look yeah. at Iowa. Nothing offensively. But the only the big thing for them, they've only turned it over once. Right. A lot of offense for Nebraska, but the three turnovers is what uh, has really kept Iowa in this ballgame. And Nebraska with four penalties. Iowa has yet to make a penalty. So they've, they've played good, solid football. Tells you something about the discipline of the Absolutely. Iowa Hawkeyes. Hayden Feld to kick it off with the wind to his back as we're underway in the second half. Chris Oliver will down it, and they'll bring it out, and Iowa will put it in play at the 20-yard line. Roger Twibo along with Bob Greasy here. Todd Harris down on the sideline. Bob, as we go to the second half, 7 to nothing ball game, Iowa's just hanging around and hanging around. Well, Iowa needs to do uh, about what they're doing, make some first downs, maybe get down, get some points, and hang around offensively for uh, Nebraska to help them. Nebraska, on the other hand, needs to open it up. They need to throw the ball down the field to the wide receivers. There are some opportunities to make big plays, and they need to do it, and they need to hold on to the football. First and 10, 20 yard line. Flemister was the man in motion there as Liddell Betts will get the football and Betts across the 20 to about the 22 yard line. As Brian Shaw, the linebacker, very interchangeable with uh, Tony Ortiz. Both of them play just about the same amount of time. I think that's a key point here too because Iowa is not interchanging. They're not as deep not nearly as deep as, uh, as uh, the Cornhuskers are, and they are playing too deep on defense and mostly on offense. So later in the game, this may uh, be a factor. We'll see how that affects the Iowa Hawkeyes as they have it second and seven. McCann on play action, and he is dropped inside the 15 by Steve Warren. 96, the big man from Springfield, Missouri, 6'2". They list him at 315, but they're proud to say he's lost about 20 pounds. Yes, for sure. 
again, the protection up front. Somebody just blows an assignment. Fullback uh, with an offensive lineman. So Warren, the senior who suffered from back spasms last year, missed two or three games, took up kickboxing, and went on a diet, feels fine now. See a guy that big, 305 pounds, kickboxing. And third and 16, bets with some room. Buries his head. Let's see where they spot it. He's close to the first down at the 30. Clint Finley was the final man to meet him. Yamini got a great block for him, and it's going to be close to the first down. Didn't get a very friendly spot from the line judge over there. There's the offensive line. Again, Warren gets through, but Betts runs around him. Oh, I don't know about that. Yamini getting in the way. He reaches forward and gets his ball across the line. And that's where you had to go. When wow. was, the, the key is if his knee hit down before the ball went across the line. So that'll bring up a punting situation for Iowa. The seventh time Jason Baker, the junior from Fort Wayne, has gone back to kick. This will be into the wind. And that's a long kick off the side of his foot. It's an Iowa player. I was trying to say that it was touched by a Nebraska player, but to no avail. Let's check in with Todd Harris right now. Todd? Well, thanks, guys. Very hot down here. I talked to Kirk Ferentz as he came out of the locker room, a big smile on his face. He is down 7 to nothing, but he said the kids are playing their tails off. If they can stay to the game plan and stick around, who knows? For Solich and Nebraska, it's all about turnovers. They need to crank it up, like Bob said, and come out and play their game. All right, Todd, thank you very much. As Bobby Newcomb back in at quarterback as the Huskers take it first and 10 from the 41-yard line. Newcomb dropped, maybe gets to the line of scrimmage. 97, LeVar Woods, the junior from Inwood, Iowa, was there to make the tackle. Well, how have the quarterbacks matched up so far today as Nebraska holds a 7 to nothing lead here with 12.05 to go in the third. Newcomb's played a lot more than Crouch has. Uh, Crouch has uh, done a little bit better with his playing time. No gain on that last play on second and 10. Newcomb to run the option again. He's got Evans behind him. Newcomb turns it up and Newcomb leans forward. Will be close to the first down across midfield to the 47 yard line where Derek Davison number 37 a junior college transfer from North Dakota College of Science makes the stop this time they get the end blocked and the end that's 85 that's uh, the, the Bates he comes around and gets the linebacker knocked down so they had the corner sealed and got around the corner Davidson the uh, linebacker who's playing a junior college transfer was a strong safety Playing linebacker for the first time. First and 10, 47 as Applegate moves to the near side. And there you go. Newcomb wants to throw it. He's got Applegate wide open. There's nobody near him. Sean Applegate. Touchdown. He was wide open. The wing back, Applegate, with just his second career reception, 47 yards on the touchdown. But I tell you, they need to come out and throw the ball down the field. Took him three or four plays. The option man is going to come over here. He's going to come down and go right across the field. Play action down the line. Show the option. Single coverage in the secondary. And that's, that's what they needed to do. Come out and go after. Josh Brown, the point after, and it's good. And Nebraska now has jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead over the Hawkeyes of Iowa. 11-14 to go in the third from Iowa City. Aiden Feld to kick it off for Nebraska. The Cornhuskers lead it 14 to nothing. Oliver and Miller back deep and with the win to his back. Big kickoff right there as Iowa will take it at the 20. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. 
MCI five cents every day. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Valvoline, you can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. Roger Twible, Bob Greasy, Todd Harris here with you in Iowa City as Bobby Newcomb connects with Sean Applegate on the touchdown pass as Iowa will take it first and 10 from the 20 yard line. Kyle McCann, the sophomore from Creston, Iowa, at the controls, and Liddell Betts gets the handoff, breaks a couple of tackles. Look at this run by Liddell Betts up to the 28 yard line, and Bob, he was right when he told us yesterday, I can make him miss. Well, and that's, that's his game. He doesn't have the speed to go all the way, so he's going to have to dodge a few guys and uh, be a, like an intermediate runner. And, uh, he's been that today. 12 carries, 57 yards for Labetz. Liddell Betts. McCann was 4 of 13, 35 yards passing in the first half. Second and two. Betts will get it again. He makes one guy miss. Might be just short of the first down marker at the 30-yard line as Steve Warren and Carlos Polk. Polk number 13 and Warren 96. Both there to make the stop. You know, Bob, you talked about the battle of attrition. A hot day here, Iowa with the black jerseys and the numbers of people that Nebraska, the quality they can bring at you from the second and 13. Especially on defense. Uh, Charlie McBride, the coordinator, has always played a lot on defense. They don't have the depth on the offensive line, Nebraska, like they used to. But uh, defensively, they can bring a lot of them players at you. On third and one, Iowa, one of eight in third down situations as the Delbets will get it. He fumbles it, falls down, and Nebraska's got it. At the 29 yard line, Nebraska comes away with the football. So on a third and short, Julius Jackson, number 50, got the hit on Betts. And the ball went down on the ground. And Nebraska comes up with it. Well, it's third and short, so Betts is just trying to do something. He, I think he uh, may have got it knocked off on the uh, on his own player, Tyne. Well, maybe the defensive back. It looked like Ralph Brown was in there. And Vandenbosch came away with a fumble recovery. So Nebraska's got it first and 10, 29-yard line. As Bobby Newcomb still the quarterback. Oh, the reverse. Evans keeps it. Evans has got some room. D'Angelo Evans now inside the 10, down to the six-yard line. And the guy he faked it to, number seven, Eric Crouch. <laughs> and he goes in there for that purpose because everybody knew he was in the game. He's going to fake it. Everybody knew Crouch was in. They maybe thought it was going to be a reverse pass, but you get the ball into a speed merchant in Evans. Frank Solich just pulling out, uh, pulling out all the stops, reverses, passes, first down. 23 yards on the pickup, first and goal from the seven-yard line. D'Angelo Evans, the lone setback. Thomas split to the near side. The pitch back to Evans. He's got one man to beat. He takes him on. And no, they're going to say he's short of the goal line. Well, he didn't try to get fancy there. He didn't try to cut it back too far. He didn't try to go to the marker. He took him on. Yep. And he now looks, looks, looks like, like he him. might be hurt. Yep. Frankie London got a block for him, both Stockdale 21 and Evans. That was a collision at the goal line. Right. Well, I'll tell you, he, he could have run for the corner, but instead he just turned it up. And they're both down. Mikel Brand, number eight, was the man that took the initial hit, and Stockdale was right behind there. Stockdale is still down on the ground, and Evans has made his way off the field now. So D'Angelo Evans, who, uh, as we told injuries. you, yeah, we enough chronicled injuries for his, uh, career. his injury problems, makes his way off the field. Roger Twibel, Bob Greasy, and Todd Harris with you at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa, where Nebraska now leads this game 14 to nothing after taking a 7 to nothing lead in at halftime, but they are pounding on the door just inches short of the goal line, and boy, a valiant first half effort by this very young and inexperienced Iowa Hawkeye football team under first year head coach Kirk Ferentz. Stockdale made five tackles so far today. You've seen number 21 there, and it's the block 
by London. Which uh, 21 sprung the. Uh, I thought maybe Brown, number eight, Angela was going to be the guy well, down. But Brown took it head on. Stockdale was in that general vicinity. London makes a heck of a block. Well, it's a very hot day here very in Iowa day. City. Yeah. Very, very hot. It's humid. Temperatures uh, have been in the 90s here the last couple of days. We've got 8.58 to go in the third. We're going to take a pause here with Nebraska leading Iowa 14 to nothing. To Koenig Stadium here in Iowa City. While we have a moment, not only is uh, Kirk Ferentz the football coach brand new this year, but Iowa also has a new basketball coach. And for that story, let's go down to Todd Harris. Todd? Thanks. Todd, thank you very much. Uh, while we're waiting, the uh, defensive back free safety Matt Stockdale, sophomore from Iowa Falls, uh, still being attended to by uh, Ed Crowley, the trainer for Iowa and his staff out there right now. As we mentioned, temperature near 90 today. Very hot, humid day. This defense has been on the field a lot so far today, Bob. And uh, on this play, Stockdale 21. 21, yeah. Top left of your screen. Just going to have a good, hard collision with uh, Frankie London right there. Now, you know, the good thing is it's not an, an ankle or a knee, and he looks like it's not a shoulder. He's not grabbing anything. I think it's just the temperature. The right side of the screen right there, number 21. I think it's just heat related and he just got not knocked woozy. Looked like London's helmet might have caught him right in the chin area. And uh, I think he just got knocked yeah. woozy. Well, and then he started. Uh, they'll take every precaution here yeah. and take no chances uh, whatsoever. Uh, Ed Crowley, the uh, head trainer there with a the visor on. Bob, a teammate of yours at yeah, Purdue. Yeah, at Purdue, he and I were uh, on the same, on the football team together. And Ed uh, went in, he's been here for 30 over 35 years one of the top trainers in the country and actually there's a uh, the University of Iowa hospitals literally right across the street from Kinnick Stadium so anyway Matt Stockdale being attended to and taken off the field right now and uh, want to remind you next Saturday more college football coming your way on ABC Sports and folks uh, got some good ones in prime time UCLA and Ohio State the Buckeyes Try to bounce back, and uh, what will the Bruins do? A new quarterback out there. That's next Saturday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time on ABC Sports. That'll be a good ball game. You bet. Shane Hall, number 10, has taken the place of Stockdale. So second and goal. Dan Alexander, the lone setback. Newcomb will take it. And the signal, touchdown, Nebraska. So Newcomb just got behind big Dominic Rayola, the 295-pound center from Honolulu, and takes it in for the score. The Nebraska's had the ball twice in the second half and has scored both times. So whatever uh, Frank uh, Solich told him at halftime, he uh, probably fired him up a little bit. 91 uh, coming off the field Jerry Montgomery with the help of uh, one of the Iowa medical staff so Josh Brown the freshman and this is an area of some concern the kicking game uh, Nebraska lost to great kicker Chris Brown yeah Chris Brown and, both the, both the and the, uh, the uh, snappers of true freshman John Garrison as Josh Brown knocks that one through so 21 to nothing now let's check out what's coming up on ABC. Josh Brown has got uh, some big fleets to fill, literally, uh, replacing Chris Brown, uh, Bob Nebraska's all-time scoring and field goal leader, as uh, Long will uh, handle the kickoff there for Nebraska. He's had uh, five turnovers now in the game. That's the first time a turnover has been converted into a touchdown. Oliver and Miller back deep, and Oliver will down it once again. And Iowa will start it from the 20 yard line. Well, for a update on the condition of Matt Stockdale, let's go down to Todd Harris. Todd? Thank you, Roger. Matt Stockdale apparently suffered an injury to the abdomen sternum area. He took a helmet right on there. And the trainer said he had some serious labored breathing. Couldn't get his breath back, so they put him on oxygen, took him in, and they don't expect him back. Roger? Okay, Todd. Thank you very much. And of course, uh, folks, uh, 
any word we get, uh, we will update uh, the condition of uh, number 21, Matt Stockdale, for you as this game uh, progresses. Iowa first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Hand off right up the middle and going absolutely nowhere. Number 15, Robbie Crockett, who has just checked into the game, his first carry of the day. Crockett, a sophomore from Battle Creek, Michigan, as Jason Lohr, who's been very active on that defensive line today, Bob, for Nebraska, makes a stop. And he is the backup uh, nose tackle to Steve Warren. A bunch of those guys in there now are backups. Burrow, the linebacker, Selecta, the defensive end. Uh, Nebraska got a lot of second line players in there. Second and 12, ball back at the 18-yard line. That's Oliver in motion. So Iowa offense didn't get their first first down until about three minutes left in the first half, and that pass intended for Oliver, and a heck of a catch right there, folks. Chris Oliver comes up with the football at the 28-yard line. Mike Brown was all over him, trying to take the ball away, but Oliver makes the reception. Now this time, uh, McCann actually has some pretty good protection. I think he's a little surprised. Throws the ball a little bit behind Oliver, who makes a nice play. Ralph Brown making his 40th straight start every game of his career. Mike his 27th straight start. So the Browns have been very solid for not related. No, not related, but very, very solid players from Nebraska Cornhuskers. Third down and two. McCann the play action. Throws it downfield, and he's got one of his big tight ends. That's Austin Wheatley. And Wheatley across the 35 to the 36. And this is an area, Bob, that Iowa has some depth at tight end. They've got three guys they feel they can play at any time during the game. Well, anytime you take over for a Hayden Fry coach football team, there are going to be some tight ends yeah, around. That's right. <laughs> but the, the tight ends at Iowa are not standing up this year. McCann finally finds him. He was open a long, a long time before he finally found him. Couldn't see around the offensive and defensive lines, but picks up a first down. Tight ends are not standing this year. As I think Hayden was the only guy in the country that uh, had the guys tight end standing up. I think you're right about that. On first and 10 from the 37-yard line, Crockett has got nowhere to go. So Robbie Crockett, who got off to a great start in his college career last year, his first career carry against Purdue was a touchdown. Yeah. Both Mike Brown and Kyle Vandenbosch were in there on the stop. Vandenbosch, he's an Iowa native. He was yeah, looking forward. Work. Yeah. Looking up, forward to coming over here. Up in the uh, north uh, west corner Charlie of the state. Charlie calls him the mad German. Oh. <laughs> he said he does, he's never seen him smile. 3.8 GPA, though, and uh, he does pretty good in the classroom. Second and 11. McCann to throw it out to the far side. He's got Casper 87, and he makes the catch at the 42-yard line. Kevin Casper covered over there by Eric Johnson. And want to remind you, coming up on ABC Sports next Saturday, more great college football coming your way as Notre Dame and Purdue. Greasy's alma mater, Drew Brees. Is he a Heisman candidate? Outstanding player. You bet he is. And then Bob and your old compadre, Keith Jackson, will be over in Lincoln next week. Oh, Nelly's coming out of retirement. <laughs> Third down and four from the 43-yard line. McCann hanging tough in the pocket and throws it low to his intended receiver, Wheatley. They wanted him to get rid of the ball quick, Bob. We were talking to the coaching staff yesterday. Quick drops, quick passes. Uh, the, the quick drops are there, but the, the receivers have to get open. You've got tight coverage in the secondary. This is an outstanding secondary that uh, Nebraska has, and there's nobody open. Baker back for the eighth time today, standing at the 29-yard line. Three is Keo Craver, five to one. Gross over on the other side. Haven't seen uh, Bobby Newcomb back there. No. Right so looks like that was a possibility, but they'll let that ball bounce. In fact, Frank Solich says that Bobby Newcomb is their best punt returner and could be one of the best in the country. 21 to nothing. Nebraska leads Iowa. Starting to roll now in the second half with 5-12 to go in the third quarter, 21 to nothing over Iowa. We talked a little earlier about uh, when uh, the new head coach, Kirk 
Ference came in here. He had to suspend a couple of players, Khalil Hill and Randy Reiners, Reiners just for this game. And then those players listed below quit the team. And uh, many of those players were starters. As Alexander makes the carry at the field. Now, Ryan Lofton, one of the players listed there, quit the team August 17th after being demoted to the second team. Now, the fifth-year grad student is being accused by the University of stealing property from Coach Kirk Ferentz's office and sending a letter threatening the Hawkeyes football program if his scholarship was not reinstated. Now, Lofton will plead not guilty to charges of extortion and fifth-degree theft. We'll have more on this right after this play, second and seven from the 30-yard line. Lucan throws it out to the near side, and the catch made by Matt Davison. Nice reception at the 46-yard line where Tariq Holman makes a stop. Anyway, the situation with Lofton was rather disturbing, and it continues as an ongoing process. We talked to the head coach and got his thoughts on it. Those are things that happen. They happen in college football. Uh, probably it's a different story in pro football, certainly, but uh, uh, apparently it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, that it did happen uh, but again I, I feel good about our end of it and that, that's all I can control uh, probably the thing that's maybe a little distasteful to me is that uh, you know we have 98 percent of our football team all working hard and doing things uh, the way we hope and you know that just the amount of attention that goes to these types of uh, 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 ordeals or issues you know that, that's just but that, that's part of the world we live in and so Alexander the ball carrier dollars old 39 over on the tackle and uh, once again uh, uh, the youngster has and entered I, a night guilty plea to those charges. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, he's just a young kid, and uh, like Ferentz was saying, he got all these other kids, 85 kids, 90 kids, uh, some on, on uh, walk-ons out here uh, doing what's right and doing it the right way, and uh, and then a couple uh, that don't, uh, some of them left, and some of them uh, raised the ruckus, and, and, the, and the university and Ferentz has to react. Second down to nine as the scores keep coming by every 15 minutes for you. We come on some play action. Got a receiver wide open. And down inside the 35 yard line. Debates. TJ Debates, the senior tight end, makes his first reception of the day. Mikel Brown, number eight, and Dallas of 39, both over there after 18 yards on the pickup. Both wide receivers over here are going to go deep to clear out, and the tight end on this side is going to sneak over. The quarterback rolls out to the right side or the top of the screen. Two receivers clear it out. The tight end kind of drifts over. Oh, I didn't do that, did he? Huh? That's just the uh, third. Look at the wrong guy. Yeah, just the third. Hey, it's early in the season. It's the first mistake I made this year. <laughs> just his third reception in his career as they go now. Tracy Wistrom. You know, that was one of the areas, I guess, if Frank Solich offensively had a concern, Bob. The tight end and the, the wing backs. Uh, a lot of guys there that he felt capable, but just really hadn't caught that many passes uh, in the program. Well, in, in this program, you're not going to catch a lot of passes, but uh, tight ends down through the years uh, and, and have caught a lot of balls. And, and Frank Solich was. Uh, was on this staff, but he didn't call the plays before last year. And I always, I always contend that he would be tougher replacing uh, Osborne as an offensive coordinator than he would as a head coach. Second and eight from the 33. Alexander right up the middle inside the 30, down to the 28-yard line for Big Dan Alexander. And I say that because Tom Osborne was was so good at calling plays. I mean, this is an option team, yes. But he was as tricky at calling plays in this offense as Spurrier, Steve Spurrier is at Florida in that spread, you know, a fun and gun style of offense. Now a third down and three. Solich, who played his college ball in Nebraska, was a high school coach there locally and then became the head freshman coach who spent his whole career in the state. Third down and three, 28 yard line. From this Iowa defense, rise up one more time. The pitch back to Alexander. And what a play out on the corner. Boy, I want to tell you what. Number 42, Peterson, took on the block, and then he made the tackle, and it's going to be short of the first down. They used that play earlier in the game, a three-wide receiver uh, option. Option situation, and uh, Frankie London, number one, to the right of your screen, number one right here. Peterson gets good vision in the backfield. Peterson's a linebacker now. London's a wide receiver. Now, you can't ask the wide receiver to block that uh, linebacker. Tark Peterson, 6'3", 230 from Kempner, Texas. And on fourth down and two, Nebraska's going to go for it. 
And now Newcomb has changed his mind. He's going to call a timeout with 118 left to go in the third quarter. And we'll be right back after this message from the NCAA. Harris back with you last year Nebraska lost four games first time since 1968 they did it they lost three conference games a home conference game and Kansas State snapped a 29 game losing streak things have changed a little in the Big 12 Bob. Yeah, that's right things have changed it's going to be interesting too to see uh, to see uh, Colorado the change yeah. of coaching there uh, Texas A&M is going to be strong Texas after that little bump in the road last uh, week or the week before getting back on the winning ways today. Larry Smith at Missouri doing an outstanding job so as too. fourth and two. They've gone on fourth down one at a time and didn't make it this time the pitch to Alexander. He is loses the ball. He had the first down. They're going to say he was down. They're going to say he was down at the 24 yard line. Anthony Heron covered it. And it's a first down for Nebraska. Key here, the wide receivers on this side blocking right there. Just get in the guy's way. Yeah, he was down. Thomas, the wide receiver. No, there's no question it was a good call. But not only do these wide receivers for Nebraska catch the ball occasionally, but their first job is to block for the option. First and 10, 23-yard line. As Bukum will roll near side, looking downfield. He's got the tight end, Wistrom. Not able to hold on to it. Davison was also down there as Matt Bowen was over on the coverage. Bowen is an impressive football player. Yes, he is. Isn't he? Uh, not only led the team in tackles last year, but one's a 4 3 40 and was an ex quarterback. I mean, what do you expect? Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Right? <laughs> we'll roll out to the left. Look at the top of your screen, top right. Good play there. It sure was. Hey, you know, we didn't mention Oklahoma and a former Iowa guy, Stoops, who's yes. down there leading the way. Huh? Yes. New, new day in Norman. Owen with five tackles. Second and 10, 23 yard line, 49 seconds. Four wide receivers. Left to go, Nebraska. Do you believe it? <laughs> Pitched Alexander. Look and at an this option. Hole. Alexander stumbles inside the 10. Uh, well, I'll tell you, he's got some great forward lean. No question. It's just trying to get that 245 pounds back up when he yeah. has nobody around him. He stumbled like, a couple of times. I like I like the call. Frank Solich, you know, he's got all these power formations, all these tight ends, and then he goes to four wide receivers, spread you from sideline to sideline, and then runs the option at you. He's got uh, Newcomb, who, who is dangerous as a runner, and then the big tailbacks, the eyebacks, who can do uh, damage to you also. Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator, came up from Vanderbilt, where he was uh, Defensive Coordinator of the Year in the Southeastern he's Conference. He's been an outstanding yeah. defensive coordinator everywhere he's been. Alexander, 14 carries, 93 yards. First and goal from the nine. D'Angelo Evans is in there as Newcomb will turn the corner. Dives. Does he get it? No, they say he steps out of bounds at the four. And he doesn't agree. He says, no, no, no. I was so I, I, I didn't step out of bounds. Four yard line. I'm, I'm just trying to remember you running the football like that. Oh. Purdue. Watch this. Let's see if he's out. Yeah, yeah come yeah. on, Bobby. <laughs> you got to try to sell it, though. Well, that's you? true. Yeah. yeah. Let's see if he goes. Made a nice effort. Second and goal from the four yard line. Twelfth play of this drive. Evans, the deep back. Newcomb, nothing going that time. Good job there by that Iowa defense. Derek Davis in 37. Was there to make the stop as we've reached the end of the third quarter. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back, Kinnick Stadium, Iowa City, Iowa. Nebraska 21, Iowa nothing. Cornhuskers with it. Third and goal, four yard line. 13th play of this drive. D'Angelo Evans, the lone running back. Bobby Newcomb, the quarterback. 
Newcomb turns it up. Newcomb touchdown Nebraska. Bob, that's that Nebraska grinded out, wear you down football. Yeah, that's that's the consistency that uh, Nebraska is looking for. And then we talked about early in the game uh, with our with our Adele. Um, Solutions, magic moments of the game. Uh, we wanted to see this machine yeah. cranking up, and uh, they're just getting started here in the second half. London to hold. Josh Brown to attempt the point after, and it's good. And the first play of the fourth quarter, Nebraska extends their lead to 28 to nothing. They're running towards the Bates. That's the tight end who is the blocking tight end. And he just puts that ball away, and he knows he's going to run it. Good job by that offensive line. Volk and Hochstein, Rayola and Sherman and Joltz come out throwing the ball in the, sec in the second half in the first uh, series. Iowa gets their possession and fumble, turns it over. Nebraska takes it in. Three possessions in the second half for the Huskers and three scores. So Iowa, after battling, particularly on the defensive side of the ball, almost to a standstill with Nebraska's offense in the first half, and it was only 7 to nothing going into halftime, just couldn't get anything going offensively at all in that well, battle have, of attrition. They haven't. They yeah. haven't done anything offensively, and you got to give credit to... Uh, to the offensive coaches, Milt Teneper, the uh, offensive uh, line coach, and, uh, Turner Gill, the quarterback coach, and uh, Coach Solich for going in halftime and, and figuring something out. This is what we need to do. Oliver on the return of the first long kickoff, and Chris Oliver across the 30 to the 32 yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by. The Grand Am with solid form design. It's excitement, well built from Pontiac. Ameritrade, the way to trade, period. Sears and the Sears National Champion College Football Trophy. And Burger King. When you have it your way, it just tastes better. <laughs> so the Hawkeyes will take it first and 10 from the 31 yard line. Flemister in motion to tight end as McCann will hand it to Crockett. And Crockett tripped up. A gain of two. Tony Ortiz, who uh, well, he went to high school up in Connecticut, originally from the South Bronx. Of New York. Big Ten is going to have a uh, good year this year. Uh, Roger, uh, you got a lot of uh, power teams back. Oh, absolutely. Ohio State's going to be good again. Uh, Michigan, although Ohio State lost some good players, uh, Michigan's going to be in there. Wisconsin, Penn State, uh, very impressive over Arizona. I was going to give a few of these guys some trouble this year. On second and seven, McCann throws it, and he completes it. And Casper breaks loose, breaks another tackle. Still going. Casper spins at the 35 before he's finally brought down. Well, I'm going to tell you what, List made the tackle, but what a beautiful play by Kevin Casper, the junior from Burr Ridge, Illinois. And that's the thing you need to do against Nebraska. First of all, try and get a completion and then break some tackles. McCann has thrown the ball 18 times, and that's only the second time that he wasn't pressured and rushed when he dropped back to throw. 31 yards on the completion. Give this young man some time and he'll do some good things for you. On first and ten handoff right up the middle. And not much working right there for Jeremy Allen, who's just checked into the game. His first carry, the sophomore from Indianapolis, who was uh, one of a number of Iowa players who came here on track scholarships. He was a weight man, throwing the discus and the shot put and the hammer throw. And Got a number of track guys. Of course, Tim Dwight's Bob, probably the most famous track guy. Took the words right out of my mouth. Second down and eight from the 33. Now McCann, well, he doesn't like what he sees. He's going to take a timeout. 13-11 left to go in this game from Iowa City. The Hawkeyes take the timeout. Nebraska leads it 28 to nothing. 
13-11 left to go in this game. Frank Solich and the great continuity in the coaching staff at Nebraska and, and programs like Penn State through the year. Solich in his 20th season is McCann back to pass and he has dropped. 13 came busting through and that was Carlos Polk as McCann goes down back at the 40. Two yard line. We're going to send you to New York and John Saunders. John. Roger, time for the Burger King win your way update. North Carolina and Virginia after a Ronald Curry interception. He's been picked off twice. Dan Ellis, 32 yards to Kevin Coffey for the touchdown. It's now 17 to 9. Virginia has grabbed the lead after trailing at halftime. Roger. All right, John, thank you very much. Third down and 16. That was the third time Kyle McCann has been sacked today. Spotted at the 41. McCann had a man wide open. It's going to be picked off. Number 50 got it. Julius Jackson. Oh, he had a man wide open. Didn't get enough elevation on that football. It was deflected and picked off as Charlie McBride, just uh, one of those coaches, his 22nd year. George Darlington, 26 years. Milt Tenapur's 25th year. That's the thing about those programs, Nebraska, Penn State. You just had that continuity through the years as we take a look at this pick. Here's the receiver, uh, Roger. He was trying to get the ball to. In between he and the quarterback are going to be some linebackers, some white shirts. And you just need to throw it over him. He just he didn't see those guys moving over. You got to throw it over those linebackers. That was Selecta who got a piece of it. As Crouch is in at quarterback, first and 10 from the 42. Crouch is going to throw it near side. And let's see what they call it. They're going to say he made the catch. I was not going to like that one. John Gibson with just the third catch in his Nebraska career. Now they're going to wave it off. It did look like that ball hit the ground first. Wave it off. So Eric Crouch, who got the Nebraska offense jump started in the first half with their only touchdown, will pitch it back. And Applegate made a good grab at it. A little fancy that time, a little wing back coming around. Yeah, well, it's just good penetration on the defensive side that forced Crouch to pitch the ball way before he wanted to. Anthony Heron and Colin Cole, both a new freshman from Plantation, Florida. It's Montgomery that's in there right at his feet that forced him to throw the ball behind Applegate. Third down and 16. Ball back at the 36 yard line. Crouch is going to drop straight back. Throwing it to the far side. Davison was there. Did he make the catch? No. A good grab by Davison, just couldn't get the foot down. Davison will always be remembered for the catch. Ah, yes. The catch. The catch. That was the only touchdown of his career, too, the touchdown yep. reception. That was 97 against Missouri. Yeah. Can't tell if his left foot was touching the ground or not. Good effort there by Davison as Nebraska will punt. Blocked as Oliver gets underneath of it at the 19. Leads one tackler but can't get away from the second man down. Boy, good job down there by Kelsey, 57, the youngster. Following the footsteps of his big brother, wearing the same number, 45 yards in the punt. Nebraska leads at 28 to nothing. Select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And beginning this year, Chevrolet will also make a donation to each player's high school. That's a great touch. Yeah, I like uh, that. I like that addition. I like that. First and 10. Ball at the 20 for Iowa. Nebraska starting to make a lot of substitutions in the secondary as Betts takes the swing pass. And Liddell Betts driven out at the 24 yard line. Let's uh, send you to New York and check in with John Saunders. John.
Roger, in the SEC, Alabama is supposed to roll over Vanderbilt. It wasn't happening that way. Vanderbilt, as a matter of fact, had a couple of leads in this game, but Andrew Zhao, 18 yards to Dustin McClintock, and Alabama has grabbed the lead 14 to 10. Roger. Hey, John, thank you very much. Our producer in the truck, Mark Loomis, uh, real happy with his uh, Commodores hanging in there. Yeah, doing a very good job, aren't they? Hey there, that's a tough one. Tough road to hold in that conference for Vanderbilt. On second and five, McCann throwing it a little bit behind Betts that time. Back there on the coverage was Dion Booker, a sophomore from Oceanside, California, whose brother Michael was a starter at Nebraska in 95 and 6 and a first round pick of the Falcons. As we take a look, Bob, at those Big 12 contenders. Well, these are the teams that figure to be contending for the for the Big 12 title. If Nebraska is to get back uh, and get into the uh, bowl championship championship game. They they have the toughest road to hold. They they play all four contenders and Colorado and Texas on the road. None of the other teams play everybody else except Nebraska. Third down and five from the 25 yard line is McCann to throw it again and way short of his intended receiver Chris Oliver as McCann feeling the heat back there. Yeah, exactly and you see him just getting up right there. He's Steve had a Warren. tough yeah. A tough, tough day. You know, Steve Warren, not only can he play football, but he's also a great singer. He can do the national anthem. He sings at weddings. And so maybe sometimes when he's got those quarterbacks, he just kind of sings them a little tune after he gets them a down. lullaby. Yeah, yeah, a little lullaby. Right? Well, the ninth punt today for Jason Baker as he is back at the 10 yard line. behind him. Craver will take it at the 31. It's away from one tackler. Craver trying to turn the corner. Watch this block. And Craver across the 45 to the 46 yard line. Flemister the tight end got whacked over there. 45 in the punt 15 on the return. We got a penalty marker down. We've got a penalty marker down. The penalty flag on the play. Well, Bob, I think a few of the Nat Nebraska players got a little too excited and were drawing some attention to themselves uh, after that block. Mm -hmm. Mike Brown got that big block. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike, on the receiving team, 15 yards from the end of the run, will remain first down Nebraska. Well, that's exactly what it was. So. 10.46 to go here from Iowa City. We'll take a pause with the Huskers leading at 28 to nothing. With a 28 to nothing lead over Iowa. If you had just tuned into the game, you'd think, well, this has just been an all-out romp, but it was a tough first half. Seven to nothing, Nebraska at halftime. Iowa's defense played outstanding football. As Nebraska with it first and 10 at the 30 yard line and uh, Bob why don't we check in again on those Dell game solutions from early on see how things have uh, panned out. Well we said Nebraska needed to crank up the machine they did not do that in the first half but uh, second half uh, got uh, they got the machine going a little bit better defensively they've dominated the line of scrimmage all afternoon. Eric Crouch the quarterback on second and eight. Crouch looking downfield, throwing deep. That's Davison. Davison goes up for it. Does he come away? I think they both have yeah, it. They both have it. And he Nebraska goes. gets it. Goes to the offensive yeah, player. It does. Boy, a battle going on for the football between Matt Davison, number three, and number eight, Mikel Brown, back there for Iowa. 38 yards on the completion from Crouch to Davison. Ball is slightly underthrown. I think the defensive man catches it first, but then Davison gets in there and gets part of it. And uh, see if it's a if it's a tie, if they both have it. The offensive man gets it. Well, Davison, who got his first career start uh, last year against Texas A&M, all he did 10 catches, 167 yards. That's a school record. And then he made that famous catch, as Bob mentioned, uh, against Missouri. That was his only career touchdown today. 49, four receptions for 69 yards as Crouch will go back, looking downfield. He's got one of those big old tight ends open, and he's taken out of bounds at the five-yard line. I believe that was 99, Aaron Galladay. 
Yeah, Galladay, 6'4", 270 pound freshman from York, Nebraska. He's the blocking That's, tight end too. Yeah, well he can catch it. It's a good release upfield, makes a little move inside. That's a nice move. 275, yeah. 270 pounds tight end. First and goal from the seven. Crouch, he'll turn it up. Crouch leans in, touchdown Nebraska. Second touchdown today for Eric Crouch. Well, the machine is starting to roll now. Uh, they got the running game going, and it didn't start, though, Roger, until they started throwing the ball, loosening up the secondary and the linebackers. Brown on to attempt the point after Josh Brown, and it's good, so he's been dead solid perfect so far today. And this big red Husker machine with probably close to 15,000 or more of their fans here in Iowa City today are rolling it up now with 943 to go 213 straight victories you see when scoring 35 or more points they're on that number right now 35 to nothing. Fake up the middle to hold the linebackers nice job of blocking up front. Galladay, who just caught the pass to get him down there. He does a nice job of just uh, helping his quarterback get in the end zone. Well, this is kind of thought we the way we thought it would sort of pan out Bob uh, eventually but it hasn't been for a lack of desire and determination on this Iowa team they've played as hard as they can they're young they're experienced they don't have much depth as Oliver takes the kick off and Oliver across the 20 and we'll get up to the 24 yard line there's a, a late hit I don't know if we're going to see a flag there or not but let's check in with John Saunders in New York John Roger, the folks in Tuscaloosa cannot be too happy as they watch this game against Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt 2-30 in the last four years in the SEC. Dan Stricker, 21 yards, gets it down to the one. Greg Zolman then takes it in for the touchdown as Vanderbilt, who's actually led now three times in this game, grabs the lead one more time at 17-14 with about three minutes to go in the third quarter. A lot of Alabama players are sitting out of that game, aren't they? Linebackers, three or four linebackers. Stop that Vandy machine as Casper makes the catch on the near side at the 30-yard line. Gain of about five on the play. Jeff Hemji, another one of those Nebraska kids who hovers around that four-point grade average. They've got three players. He's 3-9. Uh, they've got three players that are 4.0 students. MG's in that 3-9 category in electrical engineering. On second down and four, Kyle McCann and Iowa trying to find something positive to take with them to next week as Betts eludes one tackler. Liddell Betts driven out of bounds at the 44-yard line. And coming up next here on ABC Sports, we've got a lot more college football for you. Notre Dame and Michigan from Ann Arbor. First game of the year for the Wolverines and Notre Dame. Got to start last week with a win over Kansas and South Bend. And Bob, the Big Ten contenders this year. There they are. Uh, they all play each other uh, is the good thing, except Penn State doesn't play Wisconsin. And uh, if, if, who's got the advantage or disadvantage? I think Penn State has a huge advantage going in because they they have their tough games at home and only have to play Purdue on the road. Well, McCann has pummeled their fourth sack of the day as Lauren Kaiser and Steve Warren both there. Bob, at this point in time of the game, you're down 35 to nothing. You got eight and a half to go. What do you tell your offensive team? I mean, You've got this kid McCann. He's taken some hits already today. Well, you're uh, working for next week. Yeah. There's no question about that. You're trying to get some unity and some rhythm 
uh, not only with your quarterback and receivers, but mainly with the offensive line. They only have eight offensive linemen uh, healthy for this ball game that he's willing to, to use and to play. And, and that those eight have not played well. I mean, they've just been, they're young. They're, they made their first start today. Here's the quick throw to Casper. He's got the first down inside the 45 to the 43 yard line. So that time the quick throw by Kyle McCann, the sophomore from Creston, Iowa. Got five starts a year ago, was just one and four as, well, I'll tell you, Iowa really struggled at the end of last year. They lost their last five games, had trouble putting points on the board. Things sort of fell apart in Hayden Fry's last year, unfortunately. Hayden retired and after 20 years here, went out and wrote a book and he's playing some golf. He's doing some speaking and uh, living the good life and uh, he deserves it. They were outscored 175 to 42 in those last five games a year ago. First and 10, 43 yard line. McCann looking near side. And now he is just going to find a. Now he's going to stay on his feet. And he gets rid of it. And the ball's overthrown. Ryan Barton, the intended receiver, but a good job there by Kyle McCann. He's a very athletic kid, was an outstanding basketball player in high school. Matter of fact, walked on and played. With the Iowa basketball team, never gotten any games, but uh, during his redshirt freshman year. If you're going to throw it, you got to get rid of it right there. These guys are going to run you down. He's had the long afternoon, McCann. He's gotten a lot of hits. It is hot out there. I mean, we haven't, I don't think we've mentioned that enough, but it is really hot on that field. Black jerseys and all. I'll mention it again. It's hot and humid. Second and 10 from the 43. McCann comes near side to Oliver, the intended receiver. It hit the ground first before he brought it up. McCann, and McCann hit the ground. Yeah. Just, I, I think it's a tribute to him that he's only been sacked twice. Well, the most consecutive seasons of nine or more wins. This, this is an amazing graphic right here. When you stop to think that Nebraska has done this. Okay, they've won nine games so many years, but the closest one to them is Florida State and they only have 12. Nebraska has won nine or more 30 years in a row. And it's tough replacing a legend. And Tom Osborne is a legend. Right. And people are not happy when you're nine and four. Well, Tom said yeah. again about nine and four last year. He says, with all the injuries that Frank Solich had in the team, he says, I don't think I could have done any better than he did. We got a timeout called by Iowa. 744 left to go from Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. 35 to nothing. The Huskers lead the Hawkeyes. In Iowa City, and the uh, heat taking its toll on this uh, Iowa Hawkeye football team in those uh, black jerseys. Third down and 10 from the 43 yard line. Oliver comes in motion to the near side. McCann throwing quickly and through the hands of his intended receiver, Austin Wheatley. Chris Kelsey, with a lot of pressure, number 57, the youngster, the redshirt freshman from Auburn, Nebraska, who the coaches tell us is going to have a great future on the field and in the classroom. He's a 4.0 student. And he was down covering punts earlier. He's a defensive end that was down making tackles on, on punt coverage. Tenth punt today for Jason Baker. And if uh, you're curious about the uh, Iowa record for punts, legendary. Now Kinnick, 16 putts is the name of the stadium after yes, it. <laughs> Not for, for all the putts, though. Well, a new coach here at Iowa. Kirk Ferentz replacing Hayden Fry, who he was an assistant for back in the 80s. Wanted to find out what the difference between the two are. You know, I, I really don't know how to compare uh, Coach Fry and, and Coach Ferentz. You know, they're two different styles. And, you know, Coach Fry was a little, a little more uh, likely to crack a joke and make sure the team is uh, real loose. And, and Coach Ferentz is, is real disciplinarian and, and wants things done his way and, and done that way right now. So I think it's been a good change for us. Uh, you know, the guys have adjusted to it real well, and, and uh, I'm excited to see how, how things turn out. Well, Bob, you can tell they adjusted to it very well by the way they played in the first half here today. Yeah, and uh, Kirk is on the sideline making notes. Uh, this is going to take some time. 
but the foundation has been laid and uh, I was very impressed in talking with him uh, yesterday. Uh, I think Bob Bowlesby, the athletic director, did a good job in hiring both the football coach and the basketball coach here at the University of Iowa. I think they both are going to do just great. Well, that was 36 right there. Carell Buckhalter, who is the third team I back. Now, all he did was lead Nebraska in rushing last year as we have now moved to the 650 mark here in the fourth quarter, along with Bob Greasy, I'm Roger Twibel, Todd Harris down on the sideline, Nebraska with a 35 to nothing lead against Iowa here in Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, the uh, home opener for the Hawkeyes under their new head coach, the 25th head coach in Iowa football history, Kirk Ferentz. First and 10, 38 yard line, Crouch is gonna swing it over on the far side and the catch made over there as we'll send you right now to New York and John Saunders. John? A great one brewing in the ACC between North Carolina and Virginia. Ronald Curry actually struggled in this game, but look at this scamper. Then he tosses this one. 18 yards to Anthony Saunders, and it's tied at 17 apiece after the two-point conversion. Roger. Hey, John, thank you very much. Uh, Bob, a good game. What a talent. A cup Curry. A couple of schools that uh, your kids went That's to. That's true. Yeah, yeah. My two sons yeah. one of each went to one of those schools. That's good. Now Crouch. And look, look at out. Crouch. Look at him go. Crouch. All down at the 20-yard line. The speedster, Eric Crouch, brought down by Bowen. And what a big day for Eric Crouch. Touchdown run in the first half and one in the second and then that run right there of 35 yards. The guy that Norm Parker talked about yesterday, the defensive coordinator for the uh, Iowa Hawkeyes was this man right here. He was very impressed with Eric Crouch. Little option, keeps it. Just couldn't get away from Bowen. I'll tell you, Bowen gets a handle on you, you're going down. Yeah, Bowen's a good player. Yeah, he really is. Crouch, four carries, 71 yards, first and 10, 21 yard line. Clock in, Bob, 22 left to go here. Hand off, first man through there. It's here. No, Crouch has got it. Oh, Crouch, touchdown. What a fake. Goodness sakes. <laughs> man. Not the first to have been fooled by this option. Whoa! Yeah. Well, they got two quarterbacks and they use them very well. So Brown will come on to attempt the point after. <laughs> And the big red machine is rolling on now, 42 to nothing. And Eric Crouch, who got this offense ignited in the first half, has done so many good things today. And look at this one. Well, he just he, he just got ability. Look at this. He just runs over the corner there at Brown. Now he shows his speed and just getting around. I was looking at his pads, how much bigger they are than normal quarterback pads. <laughs> he wears a, he's a running back first that can also throw the football as a great leader. But well, wasn't Norm Parker telling us yesterday, he, he said, I don't think the Nebraska people care if their quarterbacks, you know, get hit. Yeah. He says they're really running yeah, backs. They don't care if they get hurt because they got other ones. But this kid, when, they, when it was announced that Bobby Newcomb would start uh, last week or maybe a little bit before, before that, Crouch was very upset and almost right. uh, there was some talk about him leaving a team. I don't think that ever came about. But of course, when you're competitive and you're young, these things are very emotional things. And and just because you don't start the game doesn't mean you're not going to play the game and be very successful. And, and hats off to Eric Crouch for taking that uh, piece of uh, information that he didn't want to hear and going out and doing something good in the ball game. With it. And the kickoff now coming down to Oliver, who takes it at the 11, Chris Oliver. And brought down at the 23, Nebraska. Six possessions in the second half, five touchdowns. And next Saturday night, it's primetime college football on ABC as UCLA take game for Iowa quarterback, a 6'6 junior from Lansing, Illinois. As the Hawkeyes take it first and 10, throwing to the near side, the intended receiver, Jeremy Allen, out there. 
And with just over five minutes to go, Nebraska with a 42 to nothing lead over Iowa. Mullen played in eight games last year, got a couple of starts. You know, everybody talks about playing two quarterbacks, uh, uh, Roger, and you know, really, there's good things and bad things. The good things are it lessens the pressure, takes pressure off one guy or the other. It voids an off day. If one guy is not going good, put the guy that's in hot. Insurance against injury. If somebody you're in the sixth game of the year and you've played two guys, at least the other guy can go. And if they're different styles, it makes it different, difficult for the defense to prepare for it. On second attempt, pass incomplete. The intended receiver was Kevin Casper. You know, on the other side, there's always the other side of the story. The cons of, of playing two quarterbacks is it interrupts your rhythm and flow in the ball game. You know, you play a series or two, then you're out, then you're in, then you're out. Less practice time with the first team. Then there's the whole thing about the quarterback controversy distraction, and you know, the coach is going to be second guessed. And I think the coaches won't do it because they're afraid of that right there. The, 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 they're going to get second guessed. This guy has a good game, and that guy's going to have a good game. Uh, I like it. If there's two quarterbacks that can play, play it. Uh, Mullen got nailed. He threw it up for grabs, and the pass is incomplete. But has anybody ever won a national title, Bob? No, no, the no nobody has ever won a national title, but, but really there haven't been that many teams that have done it. Well, Joe Germain, Stanley Jackson at Ohio that State a few years ago. That was right. We got the two kids down at Arizona. You got the two at Arizona. Yeah. You got two kids at Michigan. Right. Uh, and these two right here. I, You know, I was kidding Frank the other day. I said, uh, you're going to sneak up on somebody this year. It's the first year you haven't been picked in the top five in the nation in a long time. Nobody's thinking about Nebraska in the national championship, but uh, they could do it. 12th, 11th punt for Jason Baker. As... Craver gets it and is brought down immediately at the 36 yard line. And if time permits, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report featuring scores and highlights from across the country as the uh, duo of John Saunders and the rookie Terry Bowden. There you go. We'll be along. Well, our first full weekend of college football here on ABC Sports. We've got a great year upcoming for you, a lot of bowl action. Later on in December and January, but uh, Nebraska, as they come up to the line of scrimmage, have got a new quarterback in there right now. Number 14, uh, Jeff Perino, senior from Durango, Colorado, has checked into the game. We got to say hello to our good friend, the Fat Fox, Don Bryant, down yeah. in Nebraska. They're going to name the. Uh, Next week at the California game at, at Lincoln, they're going to name the press box uh, after our good friend uh, Fat Fox and Keith Jackson is going to be there for the game doing it. And I don't know if the people heard about Keith coming out of the retirement. Some people have, some haven't, but he's coming back mainly to do the West Coast games. But uh, since uh, the Fat Fox was retiring and we were going to name this stadium after him, he wanted to go to Lincoln and be there for part of that. Yeah. So. And just uh, one more sellout in Lincoln, right, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Continues a longstanding tradition uh, yeah. in Lincoln, Nebraska. Well, as the clock continues to run, 345 left to go. A third down the run. I was mentioning Buckhalter, who was in the game now, number 36, rushed for 799 yards, eight touchdowns uh, last year. Led the team in rushing, but it was the lowest total since 75, and only the fourth time in the last 20 years Nebraska didn't have a 1,000-yard rusher on the there team. There's the uh, total yards, 518 as uh, Carino was nailed. The ball came out, it appeared. One thing that, uh, one thing my old partner Keith Jackson missed with here because. Uh, Everybody was asking him for him in the press box and the best food in uh, college football. That's what he used to always say. When he retired last year, they gave him a pass, a lifetime pass, to the Kinnick Stadium press box so he could have the food. Uh, Keith, I'm going to tell you, it's as good as ever. Yeah. And we had breakfast this morning with this uh, early kickoff at 11 uh, Central time That's here in Iowa City. We had some nice uh, Iowa sausage and eggs. Aiden fell into punt it. And we got a penalty marker down here on the near side. 2.45 left to go. Illegal substitution on the offense. Five yards, repeat fourth down. 
you know Nebraska looking at the stadium here Roger and I know we showed a shot of it a little earlier with all the red Nebraska has some of the best fans well both these schools Iowa and Nebraska yeah. have some of the greatest fans in college football and they uh, Nebraska fans uh, follow this team wherever they go and it's blocked Hayden Phelps punt is blocked picked up and taken in by number one for Iowa Tim Dodge Tim Dodge, the speedy wide receiver, picked up that block punt. Doug Miller looked like he got the football, 29 for Iowa. Something else for Ference and the Iowa Hawkeyes to build on going into next week and the rest of the season. Good play by Dodge, number one. See him moving around, he slides over. Going to pick the ball up. Ball's going to bounce right. Take about a great bounce. Great block. Ball's going to bounce right up for Dodge. And Iowa gets on the board. Tim Douglas, the point after, and it's good. So a little bit of a moral victory there for Iowa as they get on the scoreboard here with 2.30 left. 42-7 now. The Huskers with the lead. We talked about the uh, game Cal at Nebraska next week. Of course, Iowa's got their big game against Iowa State and lost to Iowa State last year, so that'll be a, a huge game. That's going to be in Ames. And coming up next, it's the second part of our doubleheader as Notre Dame. ...has had some problems with option teams. Remember last year they played Syracuse and Donovan McNabb put on a clinic. Uh, they played Rice that gave them problems. They had a, problems with some of those teams up there. Have you got a team? You know, we've talked about the, uh, the contenders. But is there somebody uh, in the country, Bob, that you've uh, looked at and said, uh, yeah, here, here's a team that can surprise some folks this year? And, uh, well, I think uh, I think Nebraska. I mean, nobody nobody has mentioned Nebraska. Uh, and I, I've said this uh, for a long time, that I think that they're in a great position just to sneak up. Their defense is sound. Their offensive line is good, even though they lost a swab, the uh, right tackle. And they've got two guys that can play quarterback for them. Jason Baker kicks it off as Henderson takes it to the near side. Larry Henderson pulled down at the 28-yard line. So the Nebraska Cornhuskers with 2.20 left to go. Everybody patting one another on the shoulder over there. You know, they came into the stadium yesterday, Bob, at their walkthrough, and uh, we watched Iowa practice on Thursday. And there's an air of confidence. There's something about a Nebraska football team that they just expect to succeed. You see that uh, in teams that have won over a long period of time, build a tradition. I saw that in the University of Miami. Uh, Ohio State had it uh, going over the last five or six, seven years. Uh, Michigan has had it. But you're right. They look very confident and very, uh, very much in tune to what they were there for. Officials uh, conferring over on the sideline. Yeah, you know, we, we looked at the uh, the Big 12 uh, schedule. We looked at the Big 10. You know, two obviously powerhouse conferences. The Big 10 5-0 in bowl games last year. The Big 12 had seven bowl teams. They had the Heisman Trophy winner, the O'Brien, and the Lombardi Trophy winner, says one of the uh, Iowa players being checked out over on the side, uh, Shane Hall, a defensive back. Both strong conferences, but when yeah. you Bottom line, it, uh, you got to throw the SEC in there, yeah, too. Yeah, you do. Uh, Tennessee winning the national championship. University of Florida, Georgia mm -hmm. coming along. Uh, Alabama was supposed to be improved, and with Vanderbilt beating Alabama today, uh, who knows about Vandy? And they used to be one of the weaker teams in that conference. Marino's the quarterback, first and 10. 28-yard line for the Corn Huskers. And up on the left side over there. As uh, Nebraska brought 80 some players over on this trip, a lot of youngsters getting a chance to play in this game. Dietrich Duran, the eye back there. Dietrich. There's uh, number 77. Benotti. He's the big.
true freshman from Hawaii. Only two other true freshmen, Bob, have played in Nebraska in history, Will Shields and uh, Jake Young, in the modern era, we should say, of uh, Nebraska football is the handoff to the fullback, Ben Kingston. That was a nice pick up there and a first down. So Kingston getting a carry, a senior out of Omaha. As the clock continues to run. What about Arizona, though? Do they have a chance to bounce back after I, that I like Arizona. I, they Pennsylvania. got a lot of, lot of guys returning uh, from, uh, from last year's team. They've got two quarterbacks going. They just, they just really played poorly at Penn State. They were not ready to play. You know, it was one of those situations where they are not that bad, and Penn State didn't, I don't think, it was that good. Uh, Kingston on the carry again, pick up of about five, and uh, time now for our Chevy players of the game. And today, Chevrolet players of the games are Eric Crouch and Liddell Betts. And in recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And beginning this year, Chevrolet will also donate $1,000 to the following high schools. Uh, Millard North in Omaha, Nebraska for Eric Crouch and for Liddell Betts, uh, Blue Springs in Blue Springs, Missouri, just outside. Eric Crouch, congratulations. You didn't win the starting job, but you got the player of the game. You'll be playing a lot. There's no question about that. Well, it, that's an absolute fact. You know it. You know who else played well is Matt Bowen, the strong mm -hmm. safety for the Hawkeyes. Bowen had a good, uh, good, solid game. And hey, let's not forget Dan Alexander. Yes. Huh? Very impressive running the football. Alexander, the uh, junior from Wentzville, Missouri. As. He carried 15 times for 94 yards. That was Dietrich he over there, number 30. I want to thank our uh, statistician, Scott Amino, our spotter, Joe Sullivan, our producer, Mark Loomis, and our director, David Kiviot, for a great job today and all the people that uh, helped make uh, college football on ABC Sports uh, such a great place to be on Saturday afternoons during the fall. Frank Solich. Second year as head coach at Nebraska, 42-7. The final score over the Hawkeyes of Iowa and the uh, coaching debut here in Iowa City for Kirk Ferentz. It wasn't really pretty in the first half for Nebraska and Solich. I mean, they got, it took a while for them to get going. So 42-7, the uh, final here, and uh, Bob is uh, Nebraska goes home uh, to face Cal next week, and your old partner Keith Jackson will be with you. It'll be a, be a great Saturday over there in Lincoln. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Eric Crouch Fat Fox, Bobby Newcomb. So for Todd Harris and Bob Greasy, I'm Roger Twible. Thanks for being with us. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports continuing the tradition of excellence. So long, everybody.